Plunging birth rates seem to be a growing global challenge. Europe is the only continent with a negative population growth rate, but every other major region is seeing a slowdown, including Asia, North America, and Latin America. According to the United Nations, Africa is the fastest growing continent where the population is expected to double by 2050. But even there, the fertility rate is on the decline. Okay, now for a closer look at the slowing population growth rate and how it could shape economies, I'm joined by Hans Peter Kohler from Philadelphia. Hans Peter is the Frederick J. Warren Professor of Demography and Chair of the Graduate Group in Demography at the University of Pennsylvania. Thanks very much for joining us. I certainly appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on your program. You know, I think if people had watched this segment, they may say, look, you know, the planet is already overpopulated. Why are declining birth rates such a bad idea? Um, most people would argue that declining birth rates are a very good trend across many countries and regions in the world. And the issue has come up in kind of high income contexts where fertility has not only dropped below replacement levels, mm. but has dropped to these very low levels, these lowest low fertility levels, that if they persist would, you know, translate into declining overall population sizes. I remember reading about Japan more than a year ago. So what do you think are the reasons behind the decline? I'm sure there's not just one. There's a multitude of reasons, and ultimately there is a kind of profound transformation of early adulthood that ranges from kind of higher levels of human capital, transformations of the labor market, transformations of unions. It's very difficult to, a, to pinpoint to a single reason, but these trends are widespread that occur across all developed and high-income countries. Mm -hmm. So it's not a single policy. It's not a single national context. There's a set of factors that are common to virtually all high-income countries and to some extent also middle-income countries that drive fertility low, but importantly also drive fertility later. A key characteristic is that we tend to have fewer children, but also tend to have them a lot later in life. And so there has been this profound transformation of early adulthood that resulted in this pattern of both low fertility and very late fertility. I, I know you can't pin it down to just one, but could you talk about some of the issues that are affecting this birth rate? So um, for sure, it's kind of the, the it's, so let me step back to a large extent, fertility is low and late because individuals and couples desire to have relatively few children and, um, and have them relatively late in life. So having children in your life competes with many other things individuals would like to do, including kind of having promising, um, promising careers, investing in their, human, in their human capital, having leisure time, uh, having abilities to pursue different, different things in life. Right. And in this trade-off, it turns out that individuals like to have relatively few children and like to have them relatively late in life. Okay, what are the consequences of this dropping birth rate to economies? So the consequences depends. On one hand, there's moderately low fertility, um, such as prevailing in the United States, prevailing in France, some Nordic countries, um, where many people would argue that on the per capita level, the economic consequences are probably relatively, relatively small. And some people would even argue that from a growth perspective, having moderately below replacement fertility combined with moderate level immigrations may actually be the appropriate a optimal, mm -hmm. a optimal strategy of fertility level for, for a country. Once we get to fertility levels that are very low, as for instance prevailing in Korea, per, possibly prevailing in Hungary, then the consequences are a lot more severe. So they imply population aging, quite right. dramatic population aging in the long term population decline. And all of these consequences are particularly pronounced in countries that don't allow or don't desire significant amounts of immigration because immigration is obviously one way to respond to Absolutely. these trends. Hans Peter, we don't have a lot of time left, but tell me about ways that you think the birth rate can be raised, North America, Latin America, Asia, other areas. So I would argue that one shouldn't actually try to do too much in that area, and specifically I would argue that these policies that were discussed for Hungary might be desirable from a range of perspectives of mm -hmm. improving individuals' health and their well-being, but I don't think are going to be at all effective in kind of stemming a reversal in, um, 
in low fertility. So to a large extent, I would argue that there are some policies increasing compatibility of families and labor force. Um, there's some um, kind of tax policies, right. but to a large extent, I think the policies will have to kind of target it on responding to the fact that we're going to live in societies in which fertility is low and it's relatively late and where we're going to face an aging population. Okay, Hans-Peter Kohler, thanks very much. We appreciate your insight.